Let's talk about growing squash from seed to harvest. All right, well today we're gonna to plant some squash and I'm gonna show you the whole process from sowing your seeds either in starting trays like this one or directly in the garden. Planting squash is the same for any kind of squash, whether it's a pumpkin like these Kogigu pumpkins that vine out and fill a, a large area with all those vines and leaves. Uh, it doesn't matter, but today I'm gonna to show you how uh, to start yellow squash seeds, and then we're gonna follow my yellow squash from um, the seedlings all the way to harvest, and I'll show you that method. So let's go to the potting table. I'm just gonna fill up this tray. It has some pre-moistened potting mix down in there, and I've got some more, I need to top it off. This has not been pre-moistened, which uh, with this peat moss based seed starting mix, that's what you want when you start seeds, not potting soil, not dirt from your garden. Uh, you want seed starting mix because it's very fine and it absorbs water and holds on to it. Once you get it started it's absorbing water, it uh, takes a while for this peat moss, the surface tension to really uh, break and have this stuff take water. So. You can pre-moisten your seed starting mix before you start. All right, so you can see how it clumps up and doesn't soak in real easily. When you put force on it, it tends to soak up the water a little bit better. And what we want it to be nice and firm so that when we pop it out of here, the root system is not damaged too much. So work it down in there, pretty simple. All right, now that the soil has taken up a little bit of that water, just take your hole maker 5000, put a hole in the middle about an inch deep, about three quarters of an inch. It's really not all that important just so long as you cover the seed and you drop a seed into each hole it's the same when you plant in the garden. And I'm going to take some seeds and I'm going to put two seeds in each hole. Normally the rule with seeds is that you plant them twice as deep as they are long. So that's why we go down about an inch. And I'm going to put two seeds in each hole. And we're just going to cover over these holes. Pack them in. Pack them in pretty good. You want those seeds to be in good contact with the soil so that they will germinate. Always put a label in so you know what you have. Squash plants are heavy feeders. So you want to have a very rich, fertile soil. This soil is very loose, it's got some moisture in it, and it's filled with compost. And that's because I put compost on my garden beds twice a year, about a half inch layer over the entire bed, and I just leave it on top, like sheet mulch. And so that's plenty of uh, nutrition for this garden. Um, these plants have not been fertilized in any way, but if you don't have compost, you can fertilize with a liquid fertilizer like a fish emulsion to get those plants off to a good start and yeah when you plant them when you transplant them fertilize them with a, a fish emulsion and then when they start to show blossoms you might want to fertilize them again with a, a good all-purpose liquid fertilizer so here's how we plant outdoors if you're going to direct sow in the ground this happens to be a pumpkin pit and I have a video all about that it's the same process as in a tray make a hole about yay so deep twice the length of the seed and here I've got some butternut squash and I'm going to plant uh, seven seeds in this little mound I've made you could do the same in your raised beds it's the same procedure you just drop the seeds in and on these I'm only doing one per hole but um, you know you could do two if you wanted to and come back and thin and once your seeds are in you just cover them over and water them in really well you want to keep this kind of a a moist soil. You want to keep it well watered until germination. And then five to ten days is the average and squash will come up and you will see these beautiful little seedlings emerging. This is uh, my butternut squash after a few days. Maybe that's my Seminole pumpkin. I don't really know. 
Well, let's follow my seedlings of my yellow squash. It was March the 5th, or somewhere around there, I transplanted four yellow squash plants. And there's, I'm showing you how big around they're going to get. We'll see that. And these plants will get large, and I have to plant them early. As soon as I can get them outdoors, uh, I want these to be growing. I want them to grow lush and vigorous because they're going to be attacked by vine borers. And the vine borers are going to almost always destroy your squash. And people are frustrated growing squash because when they put it in, look how beautiful it looks, how lush it looks. And then, you know, before too long, the vine borers are going to discover it. So what I do is I plant as soon as I can so that I can get a harvest before the vine borers come. The squash vine borer moth is going to be almost everywhere. I have a whole video about that. Well, here we are in the middle of April, and the fruiting has begun, and it's very encouraging to see fruits come on. And, uh, yeah, this squash is very prolific. This is actually a bonnie plant, and I bought these at the store rather than starting my seeds myself. Uh, I just forgot to buy the squash seeds. Well, here we are, getting a little closer to uh, harvest time. And now, May the 1st, I have insect pressure. This is uh, damage done by cucumber beetles. And cucumber beetles are, uh, wow, they're, they're, they're pretty bad because they carry a couple of different diseases that you don't want your plants to get. Uh, bacterial wilt, and there's one of the culprits right there. And mosaic virus, carried by that guy. Uh, this is the vine borer moth. It's very beautiful, but yeah, that's rough. Well, we did get a harvest, and so here I am pulling in some of the squash. Um, got a ton of squash out of the, these plants. I'm actually survive, uh, surprised they've survived this far. So um, I think these are straight-necked yellow squashes, and you can see that uh, there's a lot of it down there. This is a jungle down here. And if you look closely, you can see vine borer eggs. More goodness coming out of the garden. Harvest time is always so encouraging. Now, I'm gonna have to trim back this plant because it's crowding my pepper. There we go. Take that little guy. Okay, check this out. Right there, that little brown dot, that is a squash vine borer egg. There's another one right there, right, right by my finger. So, there's lots of squash vine borer eggs all over this. You can see another one right there. You can take them off just by picking at them with your finger. Of course, I can't get one off and uh, discarding them. But I'll take these away, put them in the trash because I don't want those borers in the compost pile. Here is that South Anna butternut squash that I planted. And you can see now that uh, they're doing just fine. A little, a little wilty during the day. And this is something you have to understand about squash. In the heat of the day, your plants are going to wilt like this. They're going to pump water down into the stem and down into the roots below to protect itself. And they will, uh, they will look sad. But as soon as the heat of the day is not on them anymore, then, uh, yeah, they'll perk right back up. See that? That is a dead rough earth snake. Interesting. As your plants mature and get older, and begin to decline, you're going to notice leaves like this getting yellow. This is a leaf that's yellow because the vine borer has bored you know, a hole in that stem and is eating from the inside. You can see that uh, there's a lot of damage down here. But your plants are going to naturally turn yellow when the larger leaves up top shade down these lower leaves. So you don't really have to worry too much about what's going on there. Here we've got some uh, real bad borer damage. The borer went in and has eaten so much it's begun to weaken that and it's, yeah, that's, uh, that's too bad. So, one other thing you're going to notice on these squashes is little brown fruits like this one right here. You don't have to worry about that. All that is is a squash flower that did not get pollinated. The female flower has the little squash behind it and the flower out here did not get pollinated. And so, the squash turns brown. And drops off. Here's a male flower. You can tell because it's got a straight stem. There's no baby fruit behind it. And a female flower. I'll see if I can find one for you. A female flower actually has a little fruit behind it. You can see that there's a little baby fruit right behind that future flower. And that's, uh, that's how these get pollinated. Again, it gets ugly late in the season with the pest pressure and with the 
fruits that did not get pollinized, uh, pollinated, uh, you want to take these out of your garden when you see them because, uh, well, they attract other kind of pests and bugs and rodents and things. So we'll just remove all the fallen down stuff from the garden. There's the borer moth. She has come to lay eggs. Here's what I mean by uh, heavy feeders. This is a volunteer squash plant of some sort. I think it's an orange pumpkin, but I don't see any I don't see any vining out. It's kind of bushy. Maybe it's a zucchini. But uh, no female fruits down there to identify this yet. And uh, yeah, well, it came up right by my compost bin. And my compost bin, when it gets rained on, drains out this way. And so that gets naturally fertilized. And you can see how lush and green it is. There's hardly any insect damage over here because it is hidden. It's not in an area where the vine borers have been in the past. So they're not down in the ground over here and they haven't discovered it over here. So that's encouraging, that's free food right there. Well, there's our harvest for today. That's a lot of squash. I probably will get a few more before the vine borers completely take these plants down. So it's a good day. So what we have here is a mixture of crook neck yellow squash and straight neck yellow squash. It tastes exactly the same. It's just one grows with a crooked neck and one grows more straight. So there we have it, squash from seed to harvest. I hope you found this video helpful, useful. If you did, please share it. Follow us on Instagram, subscribe to our channel, and we'll talk to you next time. Happy gardening.